this step forward. We have Governor Greg Abbott joining us this evening. Thank you for making time with us. Governor, it's becoming our Friday tradition. My pleasure. Great to be back. All right, Governor, let's start with the bars. What would you tell your own friend or family member who's considering going to one this evening? Listen, be, be safe. Uh, I did this when I first went out to restaurants when they uh, got open. I, uh, as I went out to restaurants, I, I saw how safe they were. Uh, and the same thing needs to take place at these bars. Listen, uh, these bar owners, uh, they need to be back in business. They need to be able to uh, pay their rent and their employees need to be able to earn a paycheck. But the patrons also need to be safe. Go enjoy yourself, but be safe while you're doing so. Make sure you do not spread COVID-19 the reason why we are able to open up bars is because people have been responsible. They have slowed the spread of COVID-19. We must maintain those safe practices so we can continue to open up businesses. Stated that those who break the rules should not face jail time. What should police do about bars that go over that 25% capacity? Listen, there, there's all different types of enforcement mechanisms. The, the fine uh, still remains one of the enforcement mechanisms. Uh, another, especially with regard to bars, uh, they're subject to uh, regulatory uh, compliance with the TABC. And, and the TABC, uh, even before COVID, uh, they had uh, the ability uh, to remove someone's license to have a bar that's operational. Uh, and so as a result, uh, the bars know they need to stay in compliance, and I, I think they will because they gave us good standards they wanted to follow. They want to follow the rules because they want to stay open. Your most recent order allows youth sports leagues to start practice in a little over a week. What kind of guidance are you providing to the organizations who run these leagues? With that, I mean, really, is there any way to play full contact sports like football without potentially exposing athletes to the virus? Right, so what we have authorized so far does not involve full contact sports. It involves uh, non-contact sports, but uh, it could be at, at youth camps or uh, different types of organizations as well as leagues like, let's say, Little League Baseball. Uh, but we did provide specific guidance uh, to all these different leagues as well as the camps uh, about strategies that they need to follow to make sure uh, that whether it be for uh, the children who are playing in these leagues or the adults who may be showing up, uh, make sure they maintain uh, these safe uh, practices of, of distancing, good hand hygiene, things like that to make sure that we are able to engage in activities like this without spreading COVID-19. Twice now you've talked about how everyone needs to be safe, but as more places reopen, Governor, we're seeing fewer people wearing masks. What do you say to those who refuse to wear a mask despite your urging them to do so? The reason why these people are able to go to events like this is because uh, for the past two months they've been practicing these safe practices to slow the spread of COVID-19. Everyone needs to understand what I'm about to say. COVID-19 has not like just suddenly left the state of Texas or the United States. It is still here. It can still be transmitted. And if people do not continue those safe practices, including wearing a mask, it could lead to greater transmission of more COVID-19. And that would limit our ability to continue to open up businesses in Texas. On that note, Governor, in Texas's five most populated counties, Hispanics account for more positive cases than any other ethnicity or race. So what is the state doing to address <clears throat> higher rates of infection specifically amongst Hispanic people? So uh, we are adding more testing capabilities uh, in uh, areas and where uh, the population of Hispanics may be greater. We want to uh, get a greater grasp uh, about exactly what uh, the challenge is, the transmission rate, things like that. Uh, and we achieve that uh, by providing uh, additional testing as well as containment practices uh, in those neighborhoods. Four children were treated for an illness called multi-system inflammatory syndrome in Fort Worth. All four were exposed to a person who tested positive for the coronavirus. What is the state doing to track this condition amongst children? Obviously a big worry for parents. Sure, so this is relatively new in Texas. We've seen this in some other states and now it's popping up in Texas. Uh, and the Department of State Health Services uh, is in charge of tracking this along with the, the local health authorities. Uh, but this is something that we are getting on top of to make sure that we don't have some outbreaks along these lines. Obviously, we wanna do everything we can uh, to maintain the health and safety of our children. Okay, our final question tonight, Governor, is from a viewer. 
Kay Elaine on Twitter asks, why are you reopening schools when the case rate is climbing, not going down? The recommendation was for 14 consecutive days of downturn, and we haven't even reached the top. Sure, great question, Kay Elaine. I want you to know this. If you go to the White House Coronavirus Task Force standards for opening up, uh, you'll see two different standards. One is what you just articulated, 14 straight days uh, of reduced cases. It says, or, uh, a downward trajectory in the positivity rate. And if you look at the numbers that are on the Department of State Health Services dashboard, you'll see that from mid-April until today, uh, we have that downward trajectory in the positivity rate. What I mean by that is if you look at the, all the number of people tested and then the percentage of those who test positive, that number has declined from around 13% in uh, mid-April uh, to 5% today. And so Texas has achieved the standard that the White House set for being able to open up. And we are, are opening up safely. We want to make sure that you and your family remain safe while we continue to engage in opening businesses in Texas. Come August, Governor, do you think schools will be back in session? That's our plan right now. And so we are working with the Education Commissioner on strategies for schools to open safely. Uh, and so uh, they should be able to return to classrooms. Uh, the protocols in the classrooms likely would be different because there would be uh, greater sanitization, uh, certain distancing practices, et cetera, uh, to make sure that they are doing, uh, uh, having school in ways that uh, prevent the spread of COVID-19, as well as incorporating occasional distance learning uh, over uh, things like Zoom, et cetera, like what they were able to do at the end of the school year. But uh, we do believe and hope uh, the students will be able to return to the classroom this August. Okay, that's been the big question amongst of parents. So we appreciate you answering that question. The governor uh, confirming to News 8 tonight that uh, he does plan on school to reopen in August. Our thanks to you, Governor. We hope to see you again next Friday.